too much CGA went to last time, but don't want to leave that up for first pick. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It's Fiddlestick's understand because he was very annoying to deal with. It was really hard for Jax to farm anything in that last game because of eating that Caitlyn Fiddlesticks lane. Yeah. But Siobhan is still open. There's a lot of champions that you could ban out right now. Wow. I'm actually really surprised they're taking away the Grogs as well. I mean, you leave Shivana open, yeah. and a team has any idea of how to play it or can read her tooltips, they're going to play her. And right now, TFM, they're doing it. Come on, you can't. <laughs> she's one of those champions you can read like, oh, that's how you play her. That's okay. how you play Shivana. Now, but now the point I'm, is, is that she's so yeah, she is. strong right now. Uh, and we saw how effective Guerrero was there playing that lane in a similar way that you would play with Shivana yeah, exactly. or with exactly. a champion that's not as good as how Shivana would do it. So that's a scary thought from CGA's side of things, I'd be saying. Uh, on the other side of things, what is CGA going to go for here now? They've taken away the Shen, which was their first pick in that last game after he was left open. They took out the Gragas, of course, away from DFM. There's no Renekton for this top lane. Corky and Nidalee both banned out. So CGA taking their time. I hope to God that they go with an AD carry this time around because that would be uh, something that, in my opinion, they need. Um, Elise Jarvan, though, uh, or Elise Jax, I was going to say. Maybe uh, Elise Jungle Jax uh, in the top lane from I would this hope one. So, yeah. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, what do they want to pick this time? Like, maybe go for and they any Caitlyn, you know, take away Caitlyn? Because they're taking away, or they were trying to take away champions away from DFM's side, but it wasn't like necessarily DFM outplaying them with the champion they had. It wasn't like, oh, that champion was a real nuisance for us. It was more about, we don't have any D carry and they're kind of pushing around our strategy and winning it. But, you know, the Elise and the Jax, we could have Jax top lane, we could have in the jungle, but I would assume that would be in the top lane Jax. The Elise, we saw Banda almost, I want to say, every single game Banda played during Intel Extreme Masters in Cologne. Um, because she's still a really strong champion, but will her or Jax counter Shivana? I'm not sure. Because they need they need some sort of support to keep Shivana away, and that's really hard to do when she's so fast. And Anuna wouldn't be bad, I guess, since you could obviously slow her down, but with a little bit of tenacity, it won't do too much. That was the other ban from game one, right? Lulu uh, was the first ban, actually, yeah. that came out there. So we are going to be seeing Lulu in. They took out the Fiddlesticks this time around. Vi in the jungle again for Annalise. Didn't have the best of performance, I think, from his side, but uh, we'll certainly uh, be looking to remedy that one this time around. Any support coming in, and we do have this time, I'm happy to say, an AD carry in the form of Lucian for CGA. I don't know what he's going up against. It's a really interesting lane combo where you can put out quite a bit of burst with Lucian alone. Obviously, with this, how his passive works, and you have an Annie paired in with that. So they have actually a really good composition so far, but they need something to round it out with, something middle that would really kind of work well with this whole composition. But over on TFM side, if that Zed's left open, that's one of Ceres' most played champions, and that's going to be very, very hard to go up against, especially when you're going to have a squishy-ish mid laner. I mean, they have a really tanky top lane, they have a tanky jungler, they have pseudo tankers out of a Lulu, and then you mix it in with a Zed who can get in there quickly and knock everyone up. I mean, it's going to be really hard for CJ to go up against this kind of comp. Well, we see this Jinx locked in here from Imitai, who played Caitlyn in that last game, was strong with the Caitlyn as well. And, well, it's hard always to compare an AD carry to, uh, to Shen, uh, because obviously they didn't really have it, an AD carry in that last game. But should, we'll still, we shall see from this one. And it's going to be a Fizz locked in as the final pickup for CGA. Okay, so that actually is not a bad champion. Does decently well against Zed. You can obviously get rid of the uh, ultimate damage from him by playful trick strain. I'm trying to look at how this will work later on, though. I mean, if you use a fish and an Annie stun together, maybe with a Counter Strike paired in, you can do a lot of damage. I mean, damage is not anything CJ is lacking. Tankiest, on the other hand, might be what they kind of need. It depends on how it goes early game. I think if they get a decent start early on, it's going to be really hard for DFM to deal with the damage that CGA can put out. However, DFM, if Shalana doesn't get controlled, if Vi doesn't get controlled, they're going to be so tanky that all the damage that CGA has, it's going to be really hard to kind of puncture that. Hmm. The Lulu, though, against an, an, an Annie, it's a really good pick. I mean, it's like, oh, you try to burst your AD carry down, bam, Lulu ulti, not going to be able to do that anymore. I don't know, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm glad to see those CJs actually running a composition with that AD carry, just like you said. Yeah, certainly uh, missed that element of their uh, composition in game number one. That's obviously all changed here, though, for game two. So 
they should be coming out of the blocks a lot stronger. Uh, and they need to because it's a best of three. They're mm -hmm. one to zero down. They lose this one. And it's detonation that go through into the next round where, of course, uh, we've got two very other strong teams yeah. waiting to Hong play Kong after Attitude this. And Qualipur Hunters. I mean, I think we have uh, HKA as the team to probably beat here in the yeah. amateur tournament. And they're not going to be easy at all for any of these teams. But, you know, like we are saying before, Det, they're from Japan. This is their first time meeting together. This is the first probably... Oh, wait, actually, no, this is their first offline tournament if they were just meet each other for the first time. But they've done quite well. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how they've done in that first game. Well, we are going to be moving then into game number two. Detonation 1-0 to zero in the lead in this best of three. We'll see if they can make it two out of two and move through into the next round. Or I say the next round into the grand final, of course. It's a four-team single elimination bracket that we've got in the amateur tournament where either Koala Lumpur Hunters or the Hong Kong Attitude will be waiting for them after this one. And right now, I want to see what they're going to do here at level one. We do have any charge up the stun, which is quite standard. But we do have DFM pushed up with all five members towards the top side of the jungle. So it looks like they want to catch out CGA or maybe go for an invade of some sorts and maybe get some aggressive warding down, which we did not see in that last game. Yeah, they're going bottom side here. They're going tri-bush and they're, gonna, they're not going to be spotted whatsoever. There were no defensive wards left behind by DFM. So CGA have complete control of this jungle. Of course, they're not going to know that at this point. And we see them moving in. And look at this ward, that lane swap ward coming in there. So they... Trying to figure out exactly where the duo lane is going to be headed. CJ here getting the ward down in position. Are they going to stick around and take away the red here at level one? Ah, they're backing off. Wow. Yeah, I'm actually surprised to, see, surprised to see DFM. Actually, they do have a ward down. They will be able to see anyone going towards the red, but CGA, considering they have a stun to start things off with, with their comp, like they should be able to win a fight here at five on five, but either way, they're just going to back off. They're just going to see where Annalise is going. And then try to work around that, but where is the AD carry support going to go? It looks like they're going to commit down here towards bottom. Yeah, it looks that way to me. We've got at least still they, so they want to go three man invade on this one. Shivana is actually coming around the back side, and they're going with four men onto the top, onto the blue buff. So this is going to be a red buff steal from CGA. There's no question about that one. Red buff is going to be taken away. We can see that Jax. He's just gone up to the uh, red buff of their side of the things and he's going to be making sure that they get that one all secured. Peace might will take away the red on the bottom side. Right already has the blue buff in there. So interesting start to things. And Vi's actually come down. So surely at this point would realize that their red buff's gone. Yep, yeah, and Annalise is actually going to cross over the river and go for the enemy yeah. red. I mean, considering they saw red actually come over towards red a little bit late, they kind of assumed that he's probably not going to be there. It looks like they are going to go for it here. But will they go for a three-man dive on that top lane right after? I guess that's the real question. And, you know, putting Jax in a 1v2 is so hard to gank, considering he has that Counter-Strike. That's a risky play to, to smite, <laughs> to start smite. I mean, and not to, you know, finish off with the smite. Either way, <laughs> it's going to get the job done. No one came in for that one. Annalise here is going to move up towards this top lane. They did, of course, have this ward in this brush, which would have spotted anyone crossing over, which is probably thinking of just get the smite down there and get things done as quickly as possible. Annalise not going into the top lane. So no early gank from that side of things. But P smite here has picked it. up the entire jungle of the enemy. You got that flash. That could be a very, very easy kill for CGA, but will they take advantage of this? They do have the anti stun. They have the slow. They have the cocoon out of Elise, but right now they're not going to go for it. This would have been prime time if they stacked the waves correctly to really get in there. And right now, Annalise is going to be spotted coming into the jungle. And in the end, Peace Smite, considering how we started off last game, doing a great job of doing a lot of counter juggling, doing a lot of damage to DFM. Yeah, and actually, if I just, I just wanted to have a look at levels yeah actually he's behind at this point Annalise has that advantage on him uh, but obviously he does have those camps up on his side of the jungle now to go with uh, Gorira who had a fantastic game number one playing that Darius gonna have a bit more of a tougher time here now that he finally is going up against an AD carry and support yeah I, I would hope he'd have a little bit of a tougher time but Annalise coming down at kind of the wrong I, I want to say the wrong moment because you usually come around, come down about 30 seconds earlier so you can sit under that tower when the other team stacks up the mini wave against you just to make sure your solo laner can get the levels that he's going to need. So he's kind of there just leeching away a little bit for no reason. Yeah, leeching away from that one completely. In the mid lane. 
Okay, so we're going to be switching the <laughs> camera view over in a second. We're actually watching Jason's screen. Not ideal. Uh, Guerrero did just take a stun there from Annie down on the bottom side. And uh, actually took quite a lot of damage from that one. Half of his health actually being taken away from that. And you see that Anale sticking around on things. We'll see if they can actually get in for that one. I mean, Sean playing this one fairly aggressively. He's got that stun built up. So why the hell not? Spending a lot of time forcing Guerrero to uh, think twice when he comes out for this CS, but with that wave pushing back now, should become a little bit easier for him. You know, we are seeing Peace Smite. He was in that top lane. He was visiting a little bit, trying to make a gank happen over towards top side just to kind of leave a little bit of pressure off of Red. But in the end, going to go back to counter jungling here, going to commit to taking away as much as possible. And Annalise, you're seeing him. He's finally taking some double golems. I mean, he's getting something back. Yeah, double Golems coming over. Bottom lane surely will be this next target here. We can see that Analyze comes down there, but he's actually going to be recalling. So the junglers, whilst they've spent a quite a lot of time in the lane too, they've not really had any impact, to be honest, apart from st taking away that experience from their laners. Yeah, and as we can see already with how that's been happening, Seros has nice advantage middle with the CS. And the AD carry over on DFM side has an advantage as well. I mean, the only real place to see is winnings in the jungle. Oh. But right now we're seeing uh, top lane get ganked. Yeah, that was a nice polymorph actually coming in, but I'm not sure he's going to save Imitite as Red is going to go in there. Flashes in for the kill. Doesn't quite have enough damage there to finish off Imitai though. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. He committed quite a bit right there, but it just kind of shows his dominance in that lane. He gets him some free farm time now, and it, it forces DFM to back away from that. So a good job by Red to realize, you know, I got a little bit of a power spike here. I feel confident going in on this. And considering he didn't have any wards down, and I don't think they actually knew where Annalise was, it was a very ballsy play. Guerrero then getting himself some free farm now on this bottom lane as that wave pushes in towards his turret. But we're going to see a dragon attempt here. Six and a half minutes in from CGA. And their start's certainly been a lot more solid in game number two. Yeah, they definitely are at Peace Smite. I don't know who's calling for them right now, but this is a very smart play considering they have the AD carry support advantage down at bottom. They have the manpower, and they just forced DFM to back away on that top side. So a very smart, very strategic dragon taken here. Strategic move that leaves them 600 gold in the lead. I have to worry about this mid lane though. Seros, who is going to be touching on towards double CS almost. Uh, well, 20 CS at this point. Has that pickaxe in there already. And he's going to start to wonder. And this is where it becomes dangerous. Death Mark that can go down. Got the wild growth from Lulu pretty soon. President Mark, not quite six. But they should be able to dive this Jackson. Might not even need to dive him here. With the amount of damage that's coming in. But here comes Seros. There goes the damage. And in fact, he doesn't even need the Death Mark to finish off the kill. Yeah, very smart play. It's really unfortunate for Red because he had reinforcements coming. He had his AD carry and his support coming down or up towards that top side, but they just arrived a little bit too late, unfortunately for him, and a great Romy play out of Seros. 2-2-8 two, two, there, I think, was looking to do a bit of counter damage onto that middle tower whilst Zed was missing, but not quite quick enough. Vi had already come in there to make sure that that lane wouldn't suffer too much damage. Gorira is now finally starting to get rolling on this bottom side now that that AD carry, the pesky AD carry and support have gone up to the top side of things. And he should be certainly having uh, a little bit more fun racking up these minion kills. Got himself that vamp scepter in on top of his Doran's shield at this point. And now it's Jax coming down. So that will actually turn into a 1v1 lane. Yeah, he's kind of going for that standard Blade of the Room King kind of build. But I'm curious, is he going to build a Spear Visage after that to go for a little bit of MR since he's against a, decent, a decently good MR team? Or he's going to go for that Random Wins Omen or that Sunfire Cape? But either way, he's going to be a nuisance. He's going to be very hard to deal with. But Red, he's doing a great job, fantastic job of really keeping up. And look at the dominance that Cyrus is showing middle against 228. He has him, him so low and he even ignites him, trying to bait the stun. Yeah, and he actually coming in from that one. Deathmark going down there on towards Sean. Annalise getting caught out. There is the fish from Fizz and Peace Might, might be able to finish off Cyrus here. He's going to dash away with the shadow. And he would have got the kill there if he'd have gone full on in on towards Fizz. I'm yeah, not sure yeah. why he didn't. He was a little bit overconfident there for me. A safe kill is better than risking it with just your abilities. And he ended up, I guess, baiting his jungler there to die, and he might even die here as well. And I'm not sure if that was him maybe expecting another odd tactic off or something like that, or expecting a playful trickster to happen, so he would have just backed off, baiting it away, then going right back in. But either way, CJ outplayed that, and now 
looking way better than they did in that first game. God quite at the same time hammering away on this top turret. And we'll be able to uh, take that down to less than half HP, but now needs to get a move on because Gorira is coming in, going to use the ultimate in there as well. And he coming around the side. Sean already had his stun built up and ready, so he will just back away from that one, not having too many problems in the end. So lane swap's coming back on effect. It looks like Diffam definitely want to keep this 2v1 against Red. But Red does have that CS advantage. He does have that turret down, so he can bait them in for a gank, which we currently see happening with Peace Smite, or let the lane push up against his own turret. Kind of freeze it right there, get a lot of free farm, and really become hard to deal with as the game progresses on a little bit more. As you know, Shivana having that pick, he hasn't had the opportunity to use it with, with what makes it so good. He hasn't been able to get a lot of farm in his lane. Um, since they keep swapping back and forth. Oh, 2 to 8 has been spotted here. And Vi is waiting just off to the side. This could actually be pretty dangerous for the Fizz. We are going to see them going in onto it. There's a Salt and Battery, which gets cancelled out by Fizz. And now we see Elise coming in from the side as well. And actually, in the end, really well played by 2 to 8. Yeah, I mean, that's what's so annoying about a Fizz. If you pick a Vi into that, just going to dodge away from it. can dodge the death mark, and that was... A really big ultimate to, conv uh, to commit to that too, to have no result at all. Yeah, knowing that you're probably not going to get him. God quite here though. Could be in danger. Actually uses a very early barrier from this one. And he's going to be chased down by Guerrero, who's already used his ghost. But has he got the damage? God quite is doing a great job here of kiting him out. Ignite goes down, but he picks up the kill. And he should be able to survive. He does survive it. Brilliant from God Kwai. Wow, that was such a great bait too with that early barrier, then the flash over the wall just to get some distance between him and Shivana. Oh, Super Mega Death Rock, he's coming in. Is he going to land? Yes! Wow, amazing across the map there from Imitite. I thought it was a little bit off to the side, but the Super Mega Death Rocket coming in. Amazing. That has to be such a downer too after doing that 1v1 that just died in that ultimate. We do see Seraph though getting caught here. Yeah, and the fish going down. There's Tippers as well, not escaping that one. And we credit a 2 to 8 earlier on for that brilliant play to get out of the two man gank. In the end, he actually turns it around and gets the kill. But that's the thing, Sean, in game number one, his, his Tibber stuns were actually really strong for the most part. And he's done that again here at the start of this second game. Man, that's what makes an Annie so amazing to play. I mean, if you know how to play it correctly. I mean, we saw Edward over at Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. So many stuns coming down that were just perfect. So many four or five man stuns. And if you can keep doing that, the other team is really hard to, it's hard pressed for a response. But right now, Annie's getting caught here. Yeah, but actually good chompers down there from Peace, uh, sorry, from uh, uh, Imitai onto uh, Peace Might, who actually just walking straight over the top of them. They were kind of mixed in with the minions, so I don't think he uh, quite spotted them coming in. They were looking to push that wave back and get the counter gank off maybe that didn't work out for them but now they start to push around the side we're gonna have dragon up in less than 10 seconds this is gonna be a big fight if not i think cj might have this they they did get the last one and they do have currently two to eight towards the top side and he doesn't have his ultimate available but he's a huge amount of damage and control that they need for their team not to mention sean doesn't have his tibbers up so they might have to give this one away here but dfm I'm trying to take it as quick as possible. They have to be very careful right now because they could get closed in on very quickly. Fizz is actually coming down now from this top lane. Not going to be there fast enough to get things started, but there's the steal from Peace Mike. Comes in, smites it, walks away. That should never happen. I couldn't agree more. I really couldn't. I mean, you should be able to have the vision control outside of the pit to see them coming. And when you see that repel or you see anyone in your vicinity, knowing that you have the advantage in terms of abilities and ultimates being up, you stop, you Anna, kill him. Well, Annalise had his smite as well. That just, as I said, just probably should never, ever happen as we are going to see that turret finally going down. And wow, Tibbers just thrown out there for good measure. Just, you know, for style points, just to, just to scare them away. I mean, look how fast they ran away, Joe. They were like, ooh, bear, we should back out. As yeah. a bear, get out. <laughs> but either way, I mean, peace smite, great smite by him. I mean, to take that one away and to give them not a goal lead, but to close the gap that DFM's been able to build up here. Yeah, and Guerrero has actually fallen behind Jax on CS, but you just have to feel that with a Shivana, it's it's only a matter of time before you really catch that one back up. And we can see they're within five already. God Kwahu 
played that fight earlier on, apart from the Super Mega Death Rocket, which you're never going to expect to hit you from across the map. Like, that's not often that we see that kind of thing happening. Uh, he played that situation brilliantly earlier on, got himself a BF Sword in there, way up towards that Bloodthirster at this point. Um, other things coming in here, Last Whisper was completed for Zed a oh. little earlier on. We are going to be seeing that Blade of the Ruin King coming out next. I, hmm. I don't know if I agree with that item as a first buy. I can understand why he went for it, because of the zonies that would be coming in for 2-2-8. Two, two, but a Brutalizer against a team like this that's relatively squishy early on gives you the cooldown reduction, gives you some extra damage, can kind of accelerate or help you snowball very quickly. But then again, it's an all AD team versus... Or it's an all AD team, so you kind of need the armor penetration early on. So I, I, I can see why he's going for it, but I think with that first kill, he was able to provide in that top lane onto red, might have been able to snowball a little bit harder. Well, let's see. One thing, I mean, red for me is going to be a worry for uh, DFM. The fact that he's, this game certainly got rolling a lot better with yeah. his jacks. Uh, he's got, must have a decent amount. All right, 600 gold here. Got the uh, Sheen along with that Vamp Scepter at this point. But once he starts to build up towards that Trinity Forces, we are going to see President Maya taking a lot of damage again. It's Sean uh, that starts things off, getting himself in there with a good stun. Yeah, roaming yet again. He oh, they're closing in though. Oh, this could this be bad. Good. They're closing in. We can see that Red is actually waiting here. He's going to have a what? go at President Ma. He's going to get the kill from this one as well. The Knight finishing that one off. And Annie has managed to escape. The question is now whether Red can juke this one up and escape himself. As the Counter-Strike does go down, flashes away from the Flame Chompers. And he's, he's going to escape in. this. Yeah, 228 and Annie are both coming in to no. help him out here. He's going, he's going around the other way. <laughs> oh. If he actually crosses through here, he might be able to get away from it still. x he's trying to go for the great escape, <laughs> and it's going to work. He's going to get between the turrets. He's, I missed the kill. That will all be fine because this was more exciting. Red managing to get through the turrets there, and they've given up the chase. So you have to say that's a win-win scenario for CGA there. Picking up a kill on towards um, President Ma on Lulu, plus escaping as well. And then in the meantime, the top lane was able to get a kill on the Shyvana, so they yep. come out with two kills from that. They lose nothing, and they're going to get a turn on top of that. CJ looking like a completely different team. An AD carry can do wonders. Yeah, yeah. can do wonders for your team. Uh, but they look a lot confident. They look like they've had a good chat in between games, that's for sure, because they're playing with more confidence, with more teamwork and precision. The strategy has been right. We saw the Dragon Steal early on. Uh, their, their initial Dragon pickup was very early, I think four and a half minutes into the game, that was a great call. They look like a better team. I wonder if in picks and bends in game one, they actually like kind of freaked out and didn't actually check if they had an AD carry. I mean, I've, I've heard this happen before. I think uh, CLG EU was the team I think of in particular where they picked Rumble when they completely didn't mean to uh, for Wick in the top lane, but I don't know. Like I said, they're playing completely different with this AD carry. Maybe they just talk things out. Maybe they realize, hey, we should probably not troll around a little bit or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what's going through their minds. But either way, we do have that Trinity Force almost done for Red. And that's when he really starts to amp up in power. If he goes for that Blade of the Rune King on top of it, he's going to be able to pretty much 1v1 anyone over on the other side. We see the Lich being done for 228 here with that Zonia still in the works. And even Godquai going for a Trinity Force himself with that Sheen. So a lot of items being completed here and a lot of power spikes coming in momentarily. Let's see. This mid lane looks hot for uh, action at this point. Eight players in there, and they are going to go in there. Is a stun, uh, stun from Tibbers. Well, they actually end up going in towards Vine, who gets the wild growth, but President Ma taking a lot of the culling, coming down, but it's not got enough damage to finish off the Lulu. And I just thought, okay, <laughs> there's, four, there's eight people in middle. Something's going to happen here. And again, it was Sean flash Tibbers in there that got things going, but didn't pick up a kill, sadly enough, for CGA. Yeah, it was really unfortunate for them because Imitai had that cleanse up. He was able to escape that one easily. And they're not even forcing him away from this turret just yet. But in the meantime, we do see a fight breaking out towards the bottom here. Oh. Sarah's going in. Yeah, Deathmark goes down. But as soon as Counter-Strike comes in, he's like, well, I'm not sure I can fight there. He's stuck under the turret at this point. And Red's still back in onto him here. Flash away from Seros. And Jack's just showing he's a bit of a boss at this point. Yeah, he bulked him out of the out right there. It's great job of uh, you know, jumping in between turret range. But in the meantime, 228, he's coming uh -huh. for him. But he might be able to escape. But Sean's coming in from the top side. Well, he's going to be able to get away from Sean. But he's not going to be able to get away from the fish. 228 picks that one up. Nice kill. And in the mid lane, just Elise and uh, Lucian at this point causing all kinds of problems for DFM to hold on. Yeah, considering that we just saw God, uh, Godquai and Sean rotate bottom for that kill, 
they were still pressured at their own turret. They were still sitting back. They were still sitting with not much health. In the meantime, CGA are going to go for a Dragon off list. And with all five members there, with Saros down and Gorilla actually back in base, they're going to take this one for free. Detonation can't fight for that one either. They cannot challenge for that Dragon. They saw them backing away. President Mar actually does have an Oracle running at this point. So he's just going to try and uh, gain a bit of vision control. Kind of dangerous positioning that he's in right now, though. Well, speaking of... Vision control, look how many wards that DFM has. They've got four on, well, they've got at least one on multiple members of their team as that Blade of the Ring King does come in. They're trying to gain vision advantage here. And with that, with seeing CGA rotate, which has been catching them off guard pretty much this entire game, it might prevent these deaths that keep coming in over on DFM's side. So, where's the next bit of play gonna come down? CGA making sure that this mid turret doesn't come under too much pressure. The Trinity Force is now finished for Red's Jacks, And he, as I mentioned earlier on, so much better in this early mid game than he had in game number one. That's a worrying, worrying sign. We saw how confident he was to go in onto the Zed uh, earlier, who's, by the way, now picked up the Brutalizer uh, after we saw him pick up Last Whisper first and then go with a Bilgewater Cutlass in towards that Blade of the Ruin King. He's changed paths again. And the oh, we see 2 2 just take a 1v1 right there. Joe Miller, camera skills OP. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, it was probably a very quick kill. With that Lich Bait, he's going to just walk over Vi. And he did commit his ultimate to it as well, but it's, he's applying that pressure. He's split pushing as well as Jax. You see him go in, top it on Shivana here. But they have these two champions that can split push, but they only have one person that can really respond to that on DFM's side, and that's Saris, who's trying to defend this middle turret. Yeah, but he's going to get caught here, and he's surely going to go down. Puts in the death mark. Cully coming in. A great wild growth from President Mar. Wow, God quite flashing in there to try and finish off that one. And Zed actually surviving there with... Very, very little HP. Not sure exactly on the mark, but they are going to go in for this one anyway. President Mark getting caught out. There comes Tibbers. Well, here comes a dragon from the side. Gurira going very aggressive on that one. They do manage to get one. Assault and battery comes in onto Sean. And a couple of kills thrown away there, you'd probably argue, from CGA. Yeah, they got a little cocky. Right? They really want to go for a couple more kills, but they kind of just could have sat back and taken the turn. And in the end, DFM, they punished him for it. Now they're going for a push here. And with CJ backing away, they may be able to go turret themselves. I think they will, yeah. With the recalls coming in, they're not going to be fast enough, especially with the Jinx and Shivana hammering away on that one. Going to go down real quickly. And that will be 4-2 to two now in turrets. And DFM, they are behind in gold, but it's not a massive amount at this point. Yeah, that's very true, and it, I think it comes down to these team fights where CGA, well, I don't know, CGA, they can split push like I was saying before with that Fizz, with that Jax, but they still have a pretty damn good team fight when you pair in the Counter-Strike with the Annie stun, with the Fizz damage, and then Elise getting around in there if he continues to build a little bit tanky. On DFM side, they don't have a lot of synergy within the combo, but they have that ability to, with that Shivana and Vi, knock people away. So they could... They could protect Imitai, but you have Lulu as well on top of that. So they have a great ability to kite if they want to. But CJ can get right on top of you so quickly. Like, all it takes is that one anti stun, which we've seen Sean try to go for many times with that flash tippers. Yeah, every single flash has been uh, burnt on aggression, I think we can say. But look at Red now, absolutely thumping away on these minions. Not really having much of a problem when it comes to pushing things out. Mid lane. Wait three on two at this point. So possibilities coming, especially if a cocoon lands, especially if Sean is going to flash in there. Doesn't have Tibbers just yet, but he's got the, the uh, stun built up either way. And uh, they are going to be moving in for this one. This is a turret going back down, so CGA pick up their third of the game. And we see Red right now. He's actually zoned them out by sitting in between those two turrets. It kept them away from that one, so they get a turret off of that. And now they're looking for a blue buff as well, but they're not going to find it just yet. And Sean, with that Oracle, this is where the game gets really dangerous if you're on DFM, because if an Annie has an Oracle and is able to clear all the vision in your own jungle, you're forced to face check everything. And against an Annie with a stun, against this whole combat CGA has, you're not going to survive it, not even your tankiest member. So, a wait around Baron commences. DFM, as you said, having to reply to that Oracle on Annie. You've got an Oracle of their own, and actually they might find themselves a little bit out of position here. They have managed to get around, but Seros waiting off to the side. He's going to look to flank here and make an impact. Oh, we do have Elise popping up right there, but not coming down onto anyone in particular. As we do see Red go in on the Seros. 
Yeah. And you see Sean, he's looking for some stuns. Yeah, super aggressive there is the stuns coming down and DFM be melted here. God quite is finally gonna fall. Red will jump away from it. And it's Guerrera at the back here who gets the wild growth on. Is gonna finish off Sean as he just moves in there for the chomp down and the double kill. Imitai looking with his speed boost there after getting that assist. Couldn't quite get it to finish off anymore, but that will be a two for two and a pushback here from DFM. Wow, really surprised to consider how fast those two members died right in the beginning of that fight, but that was all of CGA committing their ultimates and everything they possibly can, their immediate burst damage to those two people. And Shivana just ran around not even caring too much. She didn't get dropped at all in health, and now they're going to go for this top turret here, which I don't think they're going to get, get on this take, but still a great fight back considering they've been down in gold for a majority of this game. They showed right there that they're not out at all. Yeah, red buff steel actually coming in here for Imitai. Always a welcome pickup. There's a blue buff as well available now over on the DFM side of the map. Oh, this is dangerous. Ooh. Would have been dangerous if 2 2 <laughs> had managed to get himself over the wall, but you know, that's all uh, ifs and buts. Probably should have been able to get over there and. Uh, Pick up a simple kill, to be honest, on towards President Mar, but that's, <laughs> that happens to the best of them sometimes. And to people like me a lot more often. <laughs> I was really wondering where it actually could go from that, where they could have that potential for Baron, but President Ma, considering, I, th I think he even said himself, he considered himself the weakest link of the team. He's been doing a good job on Lulu so far. He's been not getting caught too much, but right now Dragon Beast start here for CGA, but we do have Guerrilla coming in. Yeah, they managed to get that, but it looks like Peace Might will actually go down here. He's just come back down from his repel. Will fall. There's a culling coming in. Ciros will die. He's actually picked up a kill on his way out from that one, but now the rest of DFM coming around, and it's Guerrero again, right in the middle of the team, picking up kills left and right. Flash away from Godquai. He will be able to escape that one, but they've taken out Fizz. Lucian gets over the wall, but the follow-on from Vite, not quite got enough. That was a four for two. And kids, okay, you're seeing right now why Shivana should be banned out. So he's still sitting on pretty much full health. And Saros was the one to die, as well as President Ma going into the backside. Like, they were the ones that got focused on really quickly, but the damage and damage and tankiness that Guerrero had, it didn't really matter. He was oh. able to just walk through them, and now they're going for a Baron here, but Pete, he does have a smite. He is on his way here, but it's dropping so quickly. It is going very, very quickly as Shivana Jinx. And now Vi hammering away on the Baron. It's down to 5k HP. Lucian coming in from the side. Annie from the top of things as well. The Baron is low. They've got to finish it off quickly here. And they are going to finish off the Baron. Tibber was, uh, Tibbers was thrown in there, but it wasn't enough to stop the take and steal it away. And DFM really winning out with that one. Uh, that was so close to for CGA though. You saw P he actually flashed in to get close enough to repel over the wall onto that Baron, but it wasn't oh. enough. And now God quiet because then they died. Yeah, he's dead. A lovely sound of a splatting Lucian there in the mid lane. And, you know, it's been a little bit slow, I think, Ciros to get going, considering that he did get that kill early in yeah. the top lane. Uh, it all went a bit pear-shaped around the middle when he tried to go for Fizz, didn't go in with a death mark, and then it ended up dying, yeah. or, or baiting his support in, uh, or jungle it was, actually, uh, to die after that. Um, but he's showing right now with that Blade of the Ruin King with the Brutalizer Last Whisper combo that he can kill anyone. And with the backup of, you know, Shivana and Vi and Imitai, who's been doing actually a phenomenal job so far, sitting at 3-0 and 6. They're looking like they could possibly take this game. I mean, they've been down in gold for quite a while right now. They're still down in kills, and they're a turret up. But keep in mind, they're down three, I believe it's three dragons right now. See, this is the thing for me as well. CGA don't have their normal lineup here. Their coach, uh, Peace Might, playing jungle for them here. They move their jungler to the mid lane, which means that you know, the early game can go well, but can they, have they got the synergy with this lineup to actually push things through uh, and actually win a game with it? DFM have shown that they are very, very comfortable as a team here. We saw it in game number one, the rotations that they made, how they capitalized on certain scenarios. I think that they could still be in for a tough time here, CGA, despite the fact, as you said, leading almost the entire game. Yeah, I mean, we're, we've seen some hesitations within the team in terms of like where to go, what to do, when kind of thing. But keep in mind, they're against a full AD team. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, obviously, Shimano does quite a bit of magic damage as well on top of that, but pretty much a full AD team. So as long as they build armor, 
it's going to be really hard for DFM to kind of eat through that. So DFM to me is working against the clock, where CGA are just trying to hold on as long as possible here, and they need to kind of stall this Baron as, as much as they can and limit DFM to getting anything here. Uh, a lot of boards were put down back from CGA to try and counter the vision um, that DFM had already put down. They're going to lose a couple of those on the top side. President Mars spotted that one, but realizing he's a little bit too close to the enemy team to uh, really go for that one. This is going to be honestly a defining point of the game where CGA tries to stay and defend this turret and they get engaged upon by DFM. This will probably lose in the game. Well, DFM have set up somewhat of a trap. Minion wave going to be pushed through by Zed. Kill that damn ward already. There we go, finally. I don't think they actually spotted it at all that entire time, but now they have. And now they say, okay, then let's just move around onto the turret itself. Let's just go for this one. And we are going to see them taking it down to about a third remaining. At least one more win uh, minion wave needed Sean is to get here this now, down. Though. He's here. He has flash. He has tibbers available. And we've seen how quick he is to go for that flash stun, but... They're going to give it up. They're going to go for the smart move here. There's no reason to defend against that turret. If anything, you want to defend against this one. But it's going to be very tough for them, considering that the Baron buff is still available on DFM for a little bit longer. But as you said, a good flash tibbers from Sean will change an entire fight for them. Baron or no Baron at this point. But how is the call going to be made here from CGA? For me, waiting by the wall would be a uh, pretty nice position to have at this stage. The thing is, to me, I don't think DFM wants to fight under this turret. Yeah. I don't think they're, well, and for good reason, confident enough to fight them when they have the stun, they have the fizz stun, or, uh, well, not stun, but the slow plus the knock up, and then you have Jackson there to counter strike. Like, they just want to take as much gold as they can with these outer turrets. And oh, red, he might get caught here. Yeah, caught in the jungle. Can actually jump away to Sean as. Wild growth, and I'm going to assume a misclick there. That was all a little bit strange. There's a very big Vi at least running towards this bottom inner turret, and I think it might end up giving this one away as well. Baron buff has run out now, though. That was a pretty key ultimate, though. That's been going, or that went down because Shivana. I mean, pair that in with him, and it's kind of hard to run away from it. But in the meantime, the middle lane is pushing for CGA, and they lost only two turrets, so they didn't lose any inhibitors, which would have. Set them really far behind, but if you take a look at CS, Saros has been doing a good job of, of continually farming. Even though 228 is 7 and 1, he's got 260 CS, he's got the Black Cleaver, the Last Whisper, and that Blade of the Rune King done. He can one shot Godquai re really easily right now, and Lucy doesn't have anything to get out of it. So if he does get that death mark on him, he's pretty much gonna die. And you can't lose your AD carry in the middle of a fight, or in the beginning of a fight. See that red buff given over. Obviously, the gold lead has swung on us once again. DFM now nicely in the lead. Maybe a couple of thousand here as the dragon goes down. And should be sat on yeah, 1,400 for Z, 1,600 almost for Vi as well. Jinx now having the Bloodthirster, Last Whisper, and Phantom Dancer in there. Along with those home guarded Berserker Greaves. We've got a Black Cleaver now finished off for Zed. And he's also moving himself up along the path nicely as well. Imitite here, it looks like he's going to be stealing away the blue. Yeah, Cerus is going to have that GA done very shortly. And when that happens, it's going to be so hard for CGA to fight yeah. against it. I feel like they're trying to stall it out, but they're not getting like the items that they need to, to make it last to that point. I mean, we're seeing Red build a little bit of armor finally. We're seeing God quite, he needs to get a Quicksilver Slash. Like he has to be able to cleanse that death mark or he's going to explode. And right now, Peace might have just hasn't been able to get any farm at all. I mean, he's sacrificing everything possible, or everything he can get over to his team. I mean, look at the two junglers alone. 143 CS to 72. That's not a good sign. No, that's a big difference. Look at the Iron Solari in there for both of them. But a big ward war has continued to be uh, waged on this top side. And no real surprises because 30 seconds Baron comes back up into play. And this next one, if that's to go to DFM, will put them in a big lead. It's President Maya 
Going in red. super quickly here on towards red. Actually, Haas managed to get in there. Gets the slow on team. Deathmark is down, but have they got the damage to lock him up? He's down to less than half, but less than half it stays as he walks away. Sean might not be so lucky. He will actually flash off. There is a fish coming in. Imitai is going to get shut down, and that is horrible news here for DFM. They're going to continue to push through, but they don't have the damage now with that AD carry out of things. They're trying to finish off Peace Might. He's managing to walk away to the back. Gorira is going to fall down as well. Zed picked up a double kill before he was finished off. And that will leave us with just three men left on Summoner's Rift. A four for three in the end. And 2-2-8, two, two, that was such a great play out of him too because he was exhausted, but he sat on his playful trickster long enough for it to dissipate. And from that, the damage of the, of the fall down was able to pick up Imitai right there. But a little bit of a crazy fight breaking out from both teams considering... That was DFM wanting to go for it, but Red just staying alive long enough. They weren't able to get the burst they needed to pop them and pretty much take the fight themselves. And that's the thing you have to wonder. Do you save your death mark for the AD carry in there? Your death mark on Fizz is pretty much a no-go because he's just going to use it. Yeah, I mean, if they you... couldn't burst down Red, that's a really worrying sign when you can't it's... burst down the single target. It, it, was, it was tricky, though, I think, or I believe, because... We had Sean interact in that fight, so he got the stun down onto Seros, which prevented him from getting any follow-up damage on the uh, on the death mark going down. And because of that, they That's didn't have true. a lot of damage to pop him, but they still committed Imitai's ultimate, you know, the super mega death rocket in there to go for that. But Red is just was able to survive it, and he's going to have a GA done soon. So if they keep committing that many ultimates, or that much burst, or just that much into a fight against them, it couldn't really backfire. And it, it honestly did right there, as they lost four men. So Baron has now spawned in. The gold remains very close for this stage of the game. A 1,200 gold lead is all that stands. Not even that. 35 minutes in 16, 14 in kills. Threat lead, of course, with DFM. And they picked up the last Baron buff, but they need to get this vision under control. And they finally will with President Mahia and that Oracle on the top side of the map. Big line of wards here across the entire top side of the jungle. Are they going to bait it out and then go for the fight? Do they want to fight at this point, DFM? Well, considering they have ultimates available, I think they, they probably do. And they can they can see that those GAs are almost done over on Red and Godquai. And it, it's very tricky because they don't want to run into an anti. Like, if they can engage with CGA pushing out a vision and kind of face checking a bush themselves, obviously they're going to take it. But... CGA, I mean, I think because these last couple of fights, because they've been coming out ahead and then uh, ahead in them, that DFM is a little bit worried that they feel comfortable enough or confident enough to take these, you know, so one-sidedly. And the GA it has come in for Godquai, so the Death Mark isn't going to be able to kill him. It'll be able to pop the GA and take him out of the fight for a little bit, but they're kind of depending on him to one-shot someone, get him out of the fight immediately. And look at this. The players be made on Byron, but Jax... Pushing down this mid lane. Are they going to throw everything that they've got at him? No. Guardian Angel for Lucian. As you said, always going to be a pain. And Red's like, oh, look, Red buffs up. I'll be having that one then. And he's going to hammer that one away. No problem. But he needs to get around to the rest of his team. At this point, DFM pushing up that mid lane. Gonna make sure that they've got complete control over that area of things. Blue buff here for Fizz as well. I want to say that Red can split push himself and not really be worried about any 1v1 that would come against him. But I think CJ, since you know they're not running with their normal five roster, they want to be together just to make sure they can win these fights. And right now, they might face check into a bush. That could be very worrisome for them. They're going to get some wards down, but we do see DFM coming in from the side. They are going to come in from the side. The Chompers zoning everyone out of the back as Red. He's going to dive in there, and they're going to throw everything at Red. Deathmark is on him, but look at Celos. He falls very, very low, will die in the end, and now they chase off towards Fizz. Wow, President Ma, you are in the middle of nowhere. He will flash back out of the action, and then in the mid lane, we saw Analyze. He went low. Guerrero went low. That was a one-for-one one only in the end, but CGA are healthy enough with still that GA on Godquai to take Baron. And they're going to go for it here, but President Ma, he's on the other side. He's going to ward it up here. And we do already see Imatai coming up towards his Baron. They should stop it. They should just go kill Imatai right now once they see him up in a second or two. They just have, they, they can't afford to lose this. Oh, Chompa's going down. 
Here is 228 trying to get involved from the side. And uh, we see the zip, uh, zap coming in there. Are they going to finish it off? Yes, they have. Baron goes over on towards CJ. President Mar is going to go down. And now they can just chase off and surely push a big, big uh, uh, advantage home with this one. Imitai gets hit with a fish. That means sure death for him. 228 picked up another one. It's now 10 2 3 with Fizz. As the game just lags there ever so slightly, uh, but we are going to see them push now on towards this turret. This is where it becomes very hard to hold off. It's it's impossible. They, they need an AD carry. They can't go up against a Baron up CG right now. They need to not get caught. And right now, they're actually going for a fight. Uh, I think this is a bit of a last-ditch attempt. We are going to see Seros coming in back to the side. They're going to finish off one, but can they finish off Fizz here as well? He dives on towards Seros, who tries to escape on the backside. That won't quite work out for him. And in the end, they just lose one more man. That leaves three here in the mid. Jax is coming down as well. Guerrero probably going to die as well. Yep, finished off. And that will be this turret going in as the minions come down as well. And there's a big spawn time coming in. We've now got President Ma in there by the Indian. He can't defend that one alone. Imitai is coming up in five seconds, but I'm not sure that he oh. can hold it off. There's the fish once again. The culling comes in. And, well, Wild Growth didn't even save him. And this should be game two for CJ. Able to fight this one back with that very little bit of engagement that they had. And Red here with that GA going to take this turret down very quickly. And DFM are going to go down one game. Oh, Imitai actually getting hit up there at the end as well. Cleansed away. Uh, but this is the Nexus going down. We are going to be tied <laughs> at one for one. We're going into game number three here between Detonation and CGA. And that even Super Mega Death Rocket picking up the kill on a 2 at the last second. Got to be a little bit happy about that. And not, and not to mention how one-sided game one was to come back like that. It's got to be a huge momentum pump for them. As you see them uh, smiling, celebrating, like, I, th I think they don't even believe that they won that game. I mean, they played so well. It was a little bit dodgy at times. Oh, yeah, a little bit dodgy. Uh, we saw the, the lead that they had the whole game disappear from them. They ended up losing out on that Baron but they held strong. I mean, the Baron took, I think, one in a turret, maybe this, no, two, because they took the yeah, bottom took two. Uh, turret. That was just after it timed out. But, you know, in terms of how you hold against a Baron, they didn't half do bad in that one. And again, the Zed coming in had troubles, especially once those GAs start to appear. The Zonyas for Fizz, very hard, in my opinion, for them to really single out uh, a target there that they were going to go for. And that play at the top, the kind of telltale play where they threw everything at red, still weren't able to